Okay guys, I'm back for another portable Clint. I have been seeing this gentleman for the longest time and I'm gonna get to find out how long I've been seeing him in waiting rooms. He is an awesome guy. I'm not kidding you when I say this, I wanna grow up and be like this guy. I have watched him do his thing and I am so impressed with this gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Perrine. Beep, 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 oh, he's backing beep, up. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Hey buddy. What's up everybody? How are you, man? man I'm, I'm good. I just got a ticket for uh, distracted driving. I was on my phone trying to get here, but that's all right. We're going to let that go. I'm just going to pay it and move on. Man, I mean, wow. What a great attitude. <laughs> what a great attitude. Okay, Kelly, I don't even know where to start with you because A, you have 112 credits. Got a couple. I got a couple things. You know, like I said, I've been here 25 years. So this year, I just turned 50 and this, uh, you I know, commemorates, this yeah, commemorates 25 years in uh, in Hollywood. I graduated Wait, from... Don't hit, because okay. we're vibrating. We're vibrating. Okay, this is this is one <laughs> take, baby. Uh, it, you know, represents 25 years in Hollywood. I graduated from UC Irvine, got a master's in drama 25 years ago. And so I've been doing this and this alone for a quarter century i guess it would be the math i'm no math i was told there'd be no math no there is no math that's no. So for 25 years but kelly <laughs> dude i've i've watched you i've i've seen you at parties i've seen you at I like auditions I like and, dude, audition. and you you are constantly like you, you are i'm trying to put my finger on the word i don't want to say the word networking because it's not networking it's more of a personable visit with each person you come across well, well you know what the thing is you know more often than not look i love what i do I you know, know you I, do. I love what I do. I love acting. I love performing. I picked a career where I could be where, where networking and being very social is a very active part of you know what it is I do. So when you see me out and having fun and out and partying, I'm I'm not putting on a character playing you know playing a role. It's just that I enjoy what it is that I did, and I think that's part you know of why it is I've been in this town for so long. Is I could have chosen anything, and actors out there or whoever, whatever you're doing, um, if you don't like what you're doing, if you're not having fun at it, do something else. You, you're not beholden to this career. Um, you're not beholden to any career, but this is what I chose, and so uh, if I don't find joy in it, I'd leave. Have you ever thought about leaving out of those 25 years? No, 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 I, I haven't. Not because there haven't been tough times, because, oh, believe you me, you can talk about it. There's a lot of tough times. It, there's ups and downs and everything, but when you look back, as long as the trajectory is more upwards than it is downwards, you're, you know, you're, you're moving in, in, in a, a positive direction. Yep. So if you start here, and you're right here now, and you dip, why are you pissed? Because this is where you started. You're doing, you're doing great. Um, so I've never really just, you know, thought about, you know, quitting because really I'm like officer and a gentleman. I got no place to go. <laughs> I got no other skills, so I can't type. <laughs> so what the fuck am I gonna do? I got nothing else to do. So this is this is what I'm stuck with. And Kelly, your your IMDb is very impressive. I mean, it's not the fact that you have 113 credits, but it's the credits you have are beautiful. You know, you know, I, I look at it, my first thing is, you, one of my first things was I was on the Drew Carey show. And uh, the thing about the Drew Carey show, I was only on there for, for a guest star, for like one, one episode saying two lines. And two lines became four lines, because I like me. Four lines became eight lines, and eight lines become, you know, exponentially. And so when you hear 25 years, a um, 100 credits isn't that much. That's only four a year. If you, if, you, if, you look, if you look at it that way, if you're here for 25 years and... You know, if you if you get four roles a year, that's that's all right. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. not that's not outrageous. That's not crazy. But that's why I kind of say to people, just put in your time. Look at it incrementally. There's, I didn't get a huge, huge break. And look, if I walk down the street, if I walk to the farmers market right now, people would not know my name. A lot of people would say, "Hey, you're that." You're that guy. I saw you on this thing. I saw you on that thing. But I've had a career that spans 25 years. I've been able to, you know, get a house and put my, you know, help my niece through school and do all sorts of stuff. And so I'm a working general, uh, journeyman actor, and I just believe it builds upon itself. So uh, actors out there that get frustrated, a lot of times I think they're maybe not looking at it correctly because you're not going to get a huge break. But if you incrementally do this and then do that and do something, You'll, you'll look back over the last year and go, oh shit, I actually did seven or eight things that go right on your IMDb page, you know? Okay, but Kelly, let me tell you something. I also hear that you help out other people. So I think that has a lot to do with you also being successful because I always hear good things about you, man. Well, you know, the, the part of it is, you know, they say the industry is a lot about who you know. Right. So I'm a, you know, friendly, gregarious person, so I like to know people. So people are like, oh, you know what, I'm not good at networking, you know, I don't, you know, I go, well, here's a tool out there. If you're not good, you know, at, if you don't know a lot of people, here's a tool. Say, hi, my name is, fill in your name, <laughs> whatever your name is. Like, 
And that's a step towards meeting people. Networking is a huge part of what you do, but also liking people and liking what you do is a huge part of what you do. Um, you know, in many ways, I think we're all in the trenches. So I, I help people out not because I feel beholden to or have to, but because I know that, you know, that's gonna be me and that has been me and I have been helped out. And I understand how difficult this industry is. And so I believe the pie is ever expanding and that if I help somebody out or somebody gets a role, they haven't taken my role, there's, some, there's another one out there for me. So a lot of actors believe that, well, I can't help somebody else out because then they're getting my, that's, I never feel that. There's, there's too many parts, there's too many outlets, there's too many things you can create for yourself. So the universe is watching. So if you're trying to hold other people down so as to lift yourself up, that's gonna, that's gonna come back and yeah, bite you in the ass. Yeah, it sure does. It comes back a lot. Yeah. Especially at times you don't want it to come back. It never comes back when you want it to. Exactly. You never exactly. get that distracted driving ticket when you want to. <laughs> Kelly, man, I'm so sorry you got that. <laughs> so okay, smart. Kelly, let's kind of back up for a second. What made you come out here? I know you went to college close by, right? I went to college, I went to undergraduate school at Pomona, Pomona College, where I got an undergraduate degree in film studies and I got a master's in drama from Irvine. Okay, so you wanted, how long did you want to, how long did you want to be a part of this business? Well, you know what, I grew up performing. I grew up, my dad was a, you know, community theater, I was a the teacher in Penn State where I grew up, Pennsylvania, and he did community theater, and so I was on the stage since I was four. But I never really wanted to be a an actor or, you know, like a Hollywood star. I still kind of don't necessarily want to be a Hollywood star per se, but I, you know, wanted to be a good, trained, working actor. And so once I decided I loved film and television, you know, it was just kind of a natural fit for me to come out here in Hollywood and, uh, and, and, and try to do this. But again, I really don't look at, I look at what I do as a, as a job, as a vocation, the same way a plumber has a job, a lawyer has a job, a doctor has a job, that I put my eight hours in a day towards my vocation. That means writing, that means going to uh, networking events, that means doing emails, sending all stuff like that. So, you know, other than the art of being an actor, trying to find a character, trying to bring that out, a good performance, there's also the work side to it. You know, a lot of actors don't understand that this is this is a job, this is a vocation, and just like a lawyer doesn't like every aspect of you know having to read, you know the uh, the, the case studies and all that because he likes being in front of the you know the jury. There's shit that we as actors have to do that we don't like to do. All right, if you're not a good networker, fucking act like you're a good networker. Um, if you don't have to send out emails, so what? Do it, do it anyways. So again, I, I well, I, I don't want to bother them. That's a that's a big excuse that people mm -hmm. use. I don't want to bother them. I don't want to ask them that. Well, then, well, there's a question of bothering them as opposed to uh, letting them know that you have something good to offer. If if you had tickets to a you know a good basketball game or something like that, you oh, I don't want to bother my friend by giving them a call and let them know we're coming. If this is what you do, your job is to sell you. You know, I believe I sell Kelly Perrine and Kelly Perrine subsidiary products. And I better love what I sell or I'm not gonna sell a lot of them. Uh, and so if you, look, if you are afraid to sell yourself, that's fine. Just don't expect to succeed. Don't expect wow, to have something, you know, a lot of folks have this lottery, well, they should know that I'm here. Let me tell you what. Um, they were making movies long before you got here. They will be making movies long after you get here. There wasn't a beacon that went up outside of, you know, Hollywood when you when you came into town. Oh, shit. Bob's in town. We can make movies now. Get the fuck out of here. You have to let them know you're here. That's your job. You you know, you have to be a door-to-door -door salesman selling yourself. And, you know, but it's, but it's cool. But that's, that's fun, man. I like going to parties and meeting people and walking to the auditions. I'm like, hey, I haven't met you guys before. How's everything going? And, and, and again, after you put in enough time and you can't help but succeed to a certain degree. You put in more time and more work, it's, it's, you can't help but these are laws of physics. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. And a lot of times if you look at it like that, it's not as daunting. You don't have to succeed next week. Give yourself a year or two. You're, you're hopefully not gonna die and you've decided not to leave. So give yourself two or three years to get in the right position. Is no in your vocabulary? Well, yeah, I hear, I hear no all the time. <laughs> well, no, I know you hear it, but like when people ask you to do things, like me, when people ask me to do stuff, I'm like, okay, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of well, this? Well, yeah, situation? I mean, it, 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 yes, yes. I, one of the you know greatest things we all can learn, no matter what industry you're in, is the ability to take your time seriously. And you, you know, knock on wood, the lucky part is, as you become more and more successful, more people will want your time, and that's fantastic. But you have to learn how to navigate. You know, those that are trying to suck your energy. And those that are There's truly, a lot of energy suckers Yeah, out there, there. there is. There are a lot of vampire tales of, you know, oh, you're doing a project? Oh, let me suck as much as I can off of you because I'm not doing my own project. Right. So let me, you know, people people need to go and create their own things. 
Uh, but yes, you have to be able to understand and be able to say to people, you know what, right now, I'm just not able to, you know, put in a, a week's worth of time with you, but, but let me know how I can help you with, say, an hour of my time. So some, a lot of times you don't have to say no completely, but you can, you can, you know, reduce the amount of the ask wow, that they're, that's a good that point, they're man. That's uh, good stuff. asking you for. Have you always been this this motivated this, or did something happen tell me about well you, you know i you know i i grew up you know my mom was a very positive person you know we listened to <laughs> um yeah, yeah, who's this guy tony we listened to tony yeah, robbins yeah, yeah. you know growing up uh and you know my mother was just very positive and like look whatever you want to do you can do it but you're going to do it well so i remember i was on like soccer teams and stuff like that and the team stunk we got the crap beat out of us my mom was like i don't care you're going to go out there and you're going to put your all into it. And so I've always been a person that, you know, whatever I decide to do, I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to, I'm going to try. And I, and I believe that this attitude shouldn't be anything that's, that's strange or different. And part of me goes, shouldn't we all we want to put in all our time into what it is we've decided to do and believe we're going to do well? If you, if you work hard at your craft, shouldn't you succeed? Shouldn't you yeah, do well? Yeah. Shouldn't you like it? So a lot of times people are like, oh, you're so upbeat. I go, yeah, but I mean, but don't aren't you? Don't you love what you're doing? Don't you? So I guess is you know I'm kind of thrown at the amount of people that really kind of don't love what it is that they're doing, or excited about what they're doing, and that you're you're free to go do something else. Kelly, what time do you wake up in the mornings? Well, you know it, it depends. My my usually you know eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I just want to know about your day. I literally give me a good. Here's example. my day. Here's go my ahead, day. I will, I will I will break it down for you because again, down. a lot of times we talk about you know work ethic and my philosophy. Yeah. My philosophy, like we were talking about, uh, work is that you know I believe my vocation is acting, and as any job, I grew up in Central Pennsylvania. I have a nine to five work ethic. That means I put in eight hours a day. People who are in whatever business need to put in eight hours a day towards their vocation, what they fucking decided to be a professional at. So to, regardless of the days split into 24 hours, I spend eight hours sleeping, eight hours going towards my vocation, which is acting. So that means going to the gym, going to premieres, doing emails, taking an acting class, writing or reading about whatever that eight hours entails. Then I have eight hours to fuck off. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. You know, there's a 24 hour day. I'm getting enough sleep. I'm putting in my time and I have time to relax. 24 hours is a really a lot of time, but a lot of people are kind of messing around and not putting in their time. A we, lot of people. We all know very, very lazy people that they think, oh, they should, it's just not coming to me. A lot of times they go, hey, Kelly, why is it I'm not succeeding? I go, do you really want to know? Because you're not going to like my answer. And a lot of times my answer is you're not putting in your time. You're being lazy. You're spending more time binge watching Game of Thrones than you are writing that script you said you were trying to do. But Kelly, the business has changed. Well, would you better adapt or die. That's that's fine. Again, sure, it's changed. You don't think that if you talked about talk to an older actor who's in his seventies. Oh, the business changed on me. You don't think the business has changed on everybody who's trying to make a career that has longevity. This is always going to change. It's never going to stay static. And when you moved and walked into the business, there were people that are already in the business that didn't want your ass there because right. you're competition. You don't want you know the new people coming in. It's fine if we don't if, look. I hate. I don't know shit about social media. But I'm learning. <laughs> Hit me on Instagram, Insta, friend me. I don't even know. But I gotta learn it. I have to adapt. I have to grow. It's a new, it's a tool that I have to put into my quiver. It's a, it's an it, you have the tool I had to put into my toolbox, an arrow I had to put into my quiver. We have to adapt or we die. The, the the concept that these are my four skills and I have to make it with only these four, you gotta get rid of that. You better take those four and get a fifth skill. You know, take those five skills and get a sixth skill. And that all goes back to my concept of building on, you know, what it is you have. Two lines from Drew Carey became, four lines became eight. Four skills became five, became seven. You know, eight hours, I put it in, that one credit became three, became 117 or whatever it is. It's not rocket science. It's repetition and it's motion. Okay, Kelly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to go over to the left field really quick and ask you a question. <laughs> um, you're up for a big part, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you want it really bad. And okay. it's kind of one of those things you kind of need it. You kind of want it and need it, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't book it. Mm -hmm. we, we all take a time to get over a kick in the gut in Hollywood. How, sure. how do you get over a kick in the gut? Well, a lot of times, part of the... I, the part of the way I get in the kick in the, in the gut is one, just kind of take the time to allow yourself to be pissed that you didn't get it. Um, yeah, you know, talk to your friends, say, Aunt Dam, they don't know what they're missing, da da da. And 
part of you is believing that. Because <laughs> if you believe that in two years, three years, they're gonna be mad that you didn't, that they should have didn't hire you, that means that something better is coming, something better is going to show them that they should have hired you. So if you believe that, then you believe something else and something better is coming. If you don't believe that, you're going to sulk and you're gonna be mad because you think that my one uh, big shot, my one big break is gone. If you believe that you will have a number of big breaks that will come and eventually you will book what is yours. My mom always said, you will be led to that which is yours. And if that big part of whatever that you didn't get, maybe believe it wasn't yours. And again, it goes back to, like I said, the pie is always expanding. There's enough that something that is good and big and better, as good or maybe even better than that is coming. So you will, you'll get over that gut punch quicker than if you think that was it. That was my shot. Might as well pack up and go back to, you know, Pennsylvania. I, I never believe that. I never believe that this is my last shot. This is my last time to prove it. This is what's going to put me on the map. It, it, it could be the case that it will, but something will. If I believe I'm supposed to be on the map, something will come to me that I booked that will put me there. Amen, brother. I like you know? that. Yes, I like that. Okay, Kelly, move out here. And then your first gig, what was your very first gig? My very first gig was a Coors Light commercial okay and I was the upside down guy so the whole the whole concept was they were doing like core light core light vignettes and so I booked it and so what I did was I was pouring a beer and then the camera turned upside down so when I was pouring it down it was coming up it was high concept <laughs> but it pays some bills got there okay what <laughs> getting that check is high concept going here you go landlord that's high <laughs> Okay, so, did, okay, so when you booked that commercial, did you did you want to do commercials or did someone just say here's what you need to do, book commercials, then theatrical? Well, like how did see, it I look at I look at I look at all of it as performing. It, it's not necessarily that I had to do commercials, it's not necessarily that I I, I won't do television. I, you know, I know there are people that look, I'm if any chance I get to to perform, I I will and and you know, the commercials were fantastic because you kind of do them for a day, do them for two days, and some, some money kind of came in and, and, and kept me alive. And so I don't, I'll, do, I'll do a commercial tomorrow. I do, oh, shit, watch the, watch the camera. I'll do a commercial tomorrow because it's, it's a chance to get seen. It's a chance to act. It's a chance to, you know, to get yourself out there. And again, the, you know, money is, is fantastic. Bank of America doesn't care how I got the money. <laughs> They don't care if I got it from a commercial. They don't care if I got it from television. They don't care if I got it from theater. They just want the check. So, you know, a lot of times I'm like, actors, we, you know, we need to get over ourselves. This is, again, this is part of what we do as a vocation. Yeah. You know, part of what we do is we need to make money because the way the world works is you give them money and they leave you the fuck alone. <laughs> so you got to make the money. <laughs> so. Okay, Kelly, you book your first theatrical gig, which was 21 Jump Street. Well, that was way back in the day, something like that. You know, okay, it was probably just, like two or three lines. Well, you know? I know, but I always like to stop at the shows that I love. Okay, uh, cool. And so that's one of them. Yeah, 21 yeah. Jump Street, anything cool about that? Well, well, again, it was it was, it was was cool because it was one of the shows that I watched. So it was kind yeah, of cool to be yeah. on the set with people, and you're like, oh, shit, there's Johnny Depp kind of hanging over there, eating <laughs> at craft service. What do I, should I, should I say something? No, just kind of kind of do your thing and then I remember I was on Seinfeld and that was a show that I watched okay. and I'm like oh there's you know there's, there's Jerry and there's, there's Elaine and but you start to get to think that you know what these are you know these are my peers I'm not necessarily at their level but you know here we're on the same stage and I'm getting directed by you know Andy Ackerman and people from and so and they say hey good job and they kind of did all that and so you kind of look at yourself as, as as a peer this is you know just because you're not in the starting lineup doesn't make you not a pro basketball player I'm on the bench rooting them on and when they call me in I you know but I have my own stuff too that I'm, you know, the, the head of the snake on and I'm on the starting team. So it's, again, I look at all as like little, little building blocks. Some, everything will lead to something bigger and then you'll get a great gig and then they'll, it'll end. And then you're back, you're back to ground right, zero. Yeah, back to ground zero. And that's what we've chosen. That's all right, it's fine. Kelly, there's a movie you were in that I love and not a lot of people know about it, but the people who do know about it absolutely love it as uh -oh, well. Uh oh, The making of God's and God spoke. And God, God, God spoke, yeah. That yeah. is so funny. Tell me it's, about that because, tell me about it. You know, and God, the thing about, you know, and God spoke, and that was almost like 25, 26 yeah. years ago. <clears throat> and the thing about it is I auditioned for and God spoke for the, for the role of Moses or something like that. And so, you know, a few months went by and they go, you know what, we want to use the audition tape that you actually did as a part in the movie. So, I mean, I, I would, the part you see me in the movie, if I believe, is just my true actual audition for really? the part of Moses. 
And so <laughs> I've always wanted that situation to happen to me because sometimes I feel like my audition was so great. I wish they would use it. Would you, I, you know, and sometimes it, it, look, there are times that I walk into an audition and I go, I killed that. <laughs> Let's just start shooting now. You know, and I don't get it. I'm like, what? You know, I call my agent. Really? Did, who? Who said no? And they went with Denzel. Okay, I get it. No. There's sometimes you walk in and you think you have, there is nobody. That sometimes you're looking for somebody, you know, bigger, taller, shorter, small. You don't know. The director knows some. You, you kind of don't know. And there's other times you're like, man, I, you know, I, I blew it. And, and you get it. So, so you don't know. All you can do is kind of prepare, do your best, you know, try to hit it, own the room for however many minutes you're in there, and then let it, let it go, let it be. Okay, wait, one last question about God Spoke. You, was there a movie that was God Spoke? Because you, because the movie was the making of The making God. of and God Spoke. And so I think, I think, again, I was auditioning for the movie, the making of the God and God Spoke. So, and God Spoke was about to, was going to be about the making of the and God Spoke. Okay. And I auditioned for the movie, the making okay. of and God okay. Spoke. Okay. And they used the audition in the movie, the making of. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So it's right. like two layers removed from what I actually, <laughs> what I actually, That's funny, what I actually That's did. Funny. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about it. hanging with Mr. Cooper. Mark Curry, man, what a, what a fantastic guy. And I got to work with Mark, Mark Curry. And, um, oh, I forget well, who was. Well, well there's something about person. it, though. There's something oh. about it that I like. Um, you have five credits on that, but they're different characters. Yeah, there's a, I think I did a couple of different characters. I like that yeah. because I did five or six different episodes. I did five or six episodes of My Wife and Kids. <laughs> yeah, and they show. kept bringing me back for different parts, for totally different characters, and I loved it. It was fantastic. And, you know, in, in many ways, that's kind of a nod to you as a, either a you know, performer and as a professional. Because look, at the end of the day, the industry wants to work with people that they know they can trust. Um, that are going to show up, that are going to be on time, that are be Look, I always say, be a problem solver. There are so many people out there that are, you, you know, problem makers. The, the second AD, the first AD, they're all running around trying to put out fires. And if you go, you know what, I'm here, I'm in my trailer, you knock on the door, I'm going to come out, I know my lines, you go put out, they go, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, Clint, thank you. And you will be remembered, and they'll bring you back for this role. They'll bring, hey, Clint, next time come without a cowboy hat. We're going to do that. <laughs> next time put on a bandana. They'll give you three different parts because they know you can show up. They know they can trust you. This town is very risk adverse. They're not here to necessarily nurture your creative spirit. They're here to get their shot. They're here to get what's, you know, they're here, they're here to make their day. And if you can help them do that, they'll bring you back over and over. Yeah, yeah, that is very true, man. They will bring you back over and over. And again, it's not its not really rocket science. If you do your job, you will be remembered. I remember there have been a lot of times I auditioned for stuff, and I don't book it until the seventh or eighth time. But the fact that they keep bringing me back in means that, you know, they see something. Or the casting, look, at the end of the day, the casting director wants to get another job, and they want to show the producers that they can get in good people. And so if they keep bringing you back, and you're like, okay, I must be doing something right. And eventually you'll get it. You know, or you won't, or you get something else. It, it, and then you'll look back and you'll have a hundred and some odd credits. So I believe in taking pressure off yourself. If you're an actor out there that you're struggling or don't know what to do, first off, you know, take some pressure off. And understand that if you are going to be here for a while, you'll get a lot of stuff. If you just put in your time, put in your eight hours, you know, just get up tomorrow and just, okay, good, look, I'm going to, you know, and know that you're going to have to do some shit you don't want to do. Part of the eight hours is, again, networking. I don't like networker. Just do it. Go to the gym. If you need to be, a, if you're an ingenue or something like that, if you just need to stay in shape, go to the gym. But also some of the good things that are part of the eight hours. We get to watch movies. Yeah. And we, yeah. Get, to, we get Netflix send us a whole brick yep, of shit yep, that we get yep, to watch. Yep, and this yep. is part of our job. This is awesome. We get to go to networking events where they give us free booze and little mini sliders and shit. That's yep. part of our job, dude. It's fun. And, you, you know, sometimes I think, you know how many people, even when we're sitting on the guys, would trade places with us that are working in cubicles, that are breaking rocks in the hot sun, that have a stop and slow sign. You know how many people would trade places with us? All right, right. We're, we're, this, what, a, what a gift we're given, you know, to be able to, to work here. And even if you have a side hustle, doesn't matter, dude. People would trade places with you in a minute because you're going after your dreams and they recognize that that's something special that not most people are doing. Kelly. One of my one of my fondest memories of a, of working with somebody famous, uh, or I don't want to say the word famous, a great actor in my book, Bernie Mac. Oh yeah, Bernie Mac. I worked I worked on the Bernie Mac show, and yeah, he it was, was a, fantastic. It was a big scene. 
but I saw him come in on stage and he literally talked to every <laughs> single person. Yeah. I saw that you have the same credit. Did you have the same experience with Bernie? That, that well, I did? You know what? I was in the pilot of the Bernie Mac show. Oh, I think, I yeah, I think Bernie just kind of came off of uh, the, the Kings of Comedy. And so okay. he had a lot of heat. And uh, I was in the pilot episode. And I only did the pilot episode because I got something else. And I went over to that. But again, Bernie, I think it all starts, starts at the top. If the person at the top's a dick, you know, everybody is walking on eggshells. If the person is like Bernie Mac and is generous and, you know, gregarious and talks to everybody and makes everybody feel good about being on set uh, and is and he understands that everybody's there to sh lift him up and make me look good. That's why I don't understand when, when big stars or whoever are, are shitty with everybody. Yeah. Because yeah. these people got here three hours before you got here to, to set the light, to put this in town, to, da -da -da -da, to set the wardrobe, to do the costumes, to get in the makeup, and they'll be three hours here, three hours afterwards. So you better come in and be like, hey, everybody, thank you. My name's on the marquee. My name's on the show. You're all here to make me look good. Thank you. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you're not owed this. This is not your birthright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And again, that's the reason why I brought up the Bernie Mac, not just because you have it on your resume as well, but I've seen you work a room like him, like coming in and literally <laughs> giving everybody some time. Well, well again, you, part of me is like, I'm afraid I'm going to get found out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid yeah. they're going to get that... that like, what the f is he doing here? Get him out of here. So so it'd be, it's like a fear that I don't want to get fun. So I'm like, hey, how are you? So I'm like, if I make friends with everybody, they're not going to know that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of that, you know, but yeah, I, 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 I kind of do know what yeah, I'm doing, yeah, but, yeah. but there's still, yes, there's, you do. yeah, there's, there's still a little bit of, hey, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Do you want me to sweep up afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody else is going to do that. Yeah, and it's like, I, it's sometimes it's like I'm a kid and I'm happy to be here. Oh, shit, I've seen you on TV. Oh, I'm working with you. Very cool. And we're, hey, how are you doing? Hey. Yeah, I'm the same oh, way, dude. Yes. And they're going to feed us? And, yes. Oh, and there's shrimp? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's almost like I'm, like I'm stealing. And I'm just, you know, I can't contain it. <laughs> Kelly, you're so funny, man. All right, <laughs> yeah, no. Kelly, let's, uh, let's talk about one of your booking crazy ones with Robin oh, Williams. Oh, Robin Williams. Did I was you work about with him? I did. I did. I, get, I got a chance to work with Robin Williams. And he was one of the... The people whose mind was the, one of the sharpest, quickest guys I've, I've, I've ever met. And, uh, you know, it was a scene where it was Robin Williams and, uh, and he, was, he was like, I was one of three guys who were doing like a doo-wop group. <clears throat> and in between takes, Robin would just like interact with us and, and make us laugh and be quick. And, and you, you knew that you were in the presence of a genius. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because someone talked about Robin when he was early in his career and he was doing comedy stuff. He, and he said that he knew... There was only one person you ever knew that was that was destined to be a star, and it was Robin. And you could see why that spark of just just brilliance and, and genius and and fearlessness. Robin had a fearlessness that he didn't care if something fell flat because he knew the next thing that was coming was gonna was gonna topple topple it, and you'd forget about it. And so again, that's you know probably what's make a great actor, great performer, fantastic is there's a fearlessness, and so you. You combine genius with fearlessness, you're gonna get oh, a Robin, wow. yeah. a Robin, you know, Robin yeah. Williams. Okay, just one thing, really negative, really quick. Did you see any sadness in his eyes at that time? Because that was kind of like at the end. Did you see anything that? Well, you, you know what? You, you, you know what? I, I, I personally d didn't per se because I don't know if I was necessarily looking for it. Um, you know, maybe, you know, on the set, he was joyous, he was friendly, he was great. So I can't sit here and say I, I knew it was going to be, I, I, I didn't. I was just kind of in awe of the light that, that was coming off the guy. And so it was really saddening to all of us that, um, yeah. you know, at some point that was, that was distinguished. So Okay, let's move on. Hey, tell me something. How many series have you been on? Um, that well, you know, I was, I was a series. I was a series regular on one on one, one, one on one uh, uh, between brothers. I did a, a series regular for a season of uh, the Parenthood. I just did a show on Nickelodeon called Night Squad. Um, it's about four or five, and again, I've been here twenty five years, so that's one every five years. That's not that's not that good. <laughs> Dang, mean? dude, that's not that but, bad. You know, just... but, but again, if you look at it, you know, over one every five means I just finished one. That means I don't get another one until, <laughs> what is it, 1924. I don't get, I'm still going 1924. Kelly, 20, 90, 20, what is it, what year is this? Okay. 2019, 24 I'm, I'm still doing them. I was told there would be no math. God damn it. I don't get another good job for five years. <laughs> okay. Kelly, you have a five. I have to ask this question. I have to ask this question when someone has 112 credits. 
You have an audition tomorrow for five pages. Tell me your breakdown on how you're going to study for that, please, sir. Well, I guess, you know, first of all, you know, if I can see the show, I'll watch the show. I'll try to understand the tone of the show. I'll kind of do my, you know, like, like basic homework. I'll try to see what the tone of the show is. Is it a comedy? Is it, uh, you know, an hour long? Is it drama? Is it, if it's a comedy, is it, you know, single camera? Is it three, you know, um, four camera, you know? So I'll try to figure out the, the, the feel of the show. I'll read the script. I'll, you know, have somebody come in with the read lines, kind of figure out what the character want, what the character's needs are, what's going on in the scene. I'll read the script, you know, if I can, so that there's maybe there's something in the full script that can, that can flavor one line in, in, the, in the audition. Because again, what you're trying to do is you're just trying to figure your one thing, your one take, because there's gonna be 20 other guys who would do the part fantastically. And so you just have to find your one little thing that separates you from that, or your one little take on the line that maybe somebody else wouldn't, wouldn't have thought of. And again, this is, this is the same kind of work I did when I got the Drew Carey show, you know, 25 years ago, the same character breakdown. You know, sometimes you only have the sides and you gotta, you gotta decide, you gotta pick something. I find that, you know, a lot of times actors are afraid to make the wrong choice so they don't make a, a, a bold choice. Yeah. Oh, that's you, good, you yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you're gonna, you're gonna get, you need to get remembered. And sometimes, I know you've had this, where you do an audition, you weren't quite right for that part, but they go, hey, can you, can you, can you, can you read this, yep, yep, yep. this, this part, because yep. you're not quite right for this, but just can you go in the lobby, go in the other room and kind of read it. And so, you have to learn, I believe, to make strong, bold, um, justified choices. Justified. So justified choices. You can't just go, because <laughs> no one else is going to do it. Well, it's a deathbed scene. <laughs> and so, so no one else should do it, including you. <laughs> you know? So I try to go ahead and I try to break the scene down. I try to figure out what the character wants and try to make strong, justified choices as to, uh, you know, what's going on in the scene, these five pages, and I go in there and I let it rip. How, and how do you memorize your lines? How do you well, memorize? The, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of it's repetition. Okay. A lot of it is over and over again. Sometimes I take a tape recorder and I read both lines. Sure. And so I'll just sit there and listen to it over and over. And sometimes, a lot of times, I go if the, the, if the first person. If my line is, "So what do you mean?" And the person's line is, yeah, "I'm leaving you." I'm just kind of go. So what do you mean? It's like just on my. So I sometimes go, "Okay, what? What would? What would I say? <laughs> what would?" I love this person. Um, they just told me some said, I don't want to hear. Yeah, I'm not going to take it on face value because I don't want them to leave. What do you mean? <laughs> so you know, a lot of yeah, you're doing what? It could be your second line. So a lot of times, if you understand what's going, really, it's just kind of basic stuff. When you understand what's going on in the scene, what your character wants, your character wants to divert this person, your character wants to make the person laugh. When you understand that, you'll kind of naturally go, oh, what would this person say? And you go, oh shit. A lot of times, what you think would naturally say is what actually has kind of been written. Right. Unless the person, you know, the, you know, the writer is trying to misdirect, and if you go, well, my character is trying to misdirect this person. Interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, you really don't mean that. I don't know what it is, but you'll kind of find a way to justify the line within what you kind of naturally would do, okay. and just over and do it over and over and over and over again. All okay, right, that's good stuff. Or last thing, or I try to find like the through line or through thought that drives me to the end of the line. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, say, I'm yeah. leaving you, and he's like, you know, but but you can't. And there's a lot of stuff before it. You could be like, but you really can I love you too much, and there's there's no way because you're the only person I love ever. You can't. It's like driving to the you can't kind of you know you kind of learn some of the lines because you're driving to a point. Right, and right, so right. Yeah. If you kind of remember you can't. Some of this other shit kind of just. That's falls good into place. Yes, Kelly, I see what you're saying, man. That's good stuff. You know? Yeah. All right, Kelly, we're going to start winding down here, unfortunately. Me? Me? No, but come oh, back, no, come no, back, okay, come back. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to do this really quick. Mm -hmm. Worst time in Hollywood. Uh, worst time in Hollywood, I was on a, uh, a commercial for Walsall, Walsall Insurance. And my two lines were, what's that? And I did it 35 times, and by the end of it, I was like, I was insecure. I didn't know if I was going to, and the, the clients were over there, and so I would do the line to the camera, what's that? Didn't look over. Uh, <laughs> yep, the yep, yep. What's that? What's that? <laughs> anyway, what's that? And so I'd look at, even before, and you could see the client going, this fucking guy. <laughs> So it was the worst time because, you know, I'm sure they had takes and they used a take and it was fine. Uh, but there's going to be times where you're just going to be like, okay, just get through it. Just get through it. You got it. You booked it. There's, there's something they're going to use. Just just get through it. So that was a time where, I, you know, this little bead of sweat was actually coming down. What's that, sweat? They're like, dab, cut. Dab is sweat. 
and let him say what's up, <laughs> what's up nine more times. <laughs> so that was probably the most. Okay, best time in Hollywood. Uh, well, you know, the best time in Hollywood is, is maybe is when I'm doing, there was a show we did called, uh, you know, One on One, uh, either One on One or... or um, and that went on for a while. That was you on for four years. Yeah. That was the longest time yeah. I've been on it. it. The best time in Hollywood is really when you kind of, you're in season three, it's almost like a, an Our Town moment where if you, if you had a comeback, they wouldn't pick that. Why would you pick that one? Because it's an ordinary moment. But it's a moment where you kind of you, you kind of come in, you're in episode nine or something, and you kind of look around, and you're about to do a scene, and you have a script, and you have your name in there, and you kind of look around and go, you know what, this is this is kind of cool, and you know I don't have to audition for it, and they're gonna they're gonna let me play, and they're gonna pay me for it. I need to go. This is this is all right because it's a culmination of the hard work that you put in. Yep. You know you have more work coming. You can just kind of let the shoulders go like this. <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And you're like, okay, yeah. And you know, you talk to your mom, your mom, you're doing well, and you're like, okay. It's not, it's not a moment that everybody sees or everybody goes, they said, when you did this and when you work with, yeah, yeah, those were fantastic too. But when you kind of find a moment of contentment that yes. you've, you've succeeded to a whatever degree in the field that you've chosen, you go, Okay, all the hard work, all the grad school rolling around the ground and going, bruh, 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 police and Peter Piper. You know, and the auditions and people, you're like, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's worth it. And they call you on set and you're like, cool, let me go hit this. You're like, this is, this is why I chose what I chose. Kelly, you are awesome. <laughs> I mean, seriously, ever since I've known you, you've been awesome. How, what, what year did you come out? I'm just trying to figure out well, how I, 25 you know, years, I know that, but what's the 25 year? years in the industry. I, I, I came to California because I was going to school, so 80, yeah, 80, um, 87 and 91, I was in college, 91 to 94, I was in grad school, and then 94 to to slash till present, I've, I've been here. So this okay, is like dude, 25 you've years. You've always been on my radar, man. You've always been on my radar. Yeah, and the beauty, and the beauty is, after 25 years, I'm, I'm, I still haven't hit my stride. I still I have, you, have you know, my own shows that I'd like to be on, uh, that I'd like to be number one on the call sheet. I still have other features that I like to do. I have my own projects. that. So I have 25 more years of, of, of my own stuff and shit that I'm looking forward to doing. And so that's a beautiful place, I think, for just a human being and an artist to be able to go, I got 25 years more you know, years worth of stuff I'm, I'm, I'm raring to do. Kelly, I would buy stock in you in a heartbeat. <laughs> and I mean that, too. <laughs> Kelly, do me a favor. First of all, thank you. Not at all. Do me a favor. Say goodbye to everybody. All right, everybody. Thank you for, uh, thank you for listening.